Hello everybody and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a good time for some Victory 2 <clears throat> with HFM in our Empire Brazil tutorial series. So last we left off, we are in the year 1870. We're going to begin our analytic philosophy tech pretty soon, about 1871, October. And then we're going to be focusing very heavily on culture techs, industry techs, commercial techs, and army techs because we're going to be industrializing very, very quickly and hopefully becoming a great power very, very soon. <clears throat> I know this has been a bit of a slower campaign. Um, less things are happening, but I just wanted to teach new players that, you know, Victoria 2 is not a war game. You should not be going to war all the time or even most of the time. Um, you really should try and <clears throat> industrialize more. Expand peacefully if you can through economics and through industrial power. And so our literacy right now is increasing really, really fast. Really quick. Let's take a quick look around. South America here. Let's see. The only real power that can rival us as far as population down here in South America looks to be Argentina. Um, which is interesting. Most immigrants are still going to the United States and the Empire of Mexico. We're going to be taking back our core here of Iguatemi sometime fairly soon. Uh, let's see. Actually, a war just got declared. Let's see. Argentinians have attacked... Paraguay and Chile. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Argentina and Chile. Um, we could move in against these guys. They do have better military tech than us, though, so I don't think that would be the best idea in the world. Um, I could, I could, we could do it. Could do it. I don't know. We could expand a little bit if I wanted to. Um, but I'm not so convinced that it's a good idea. The, you know, the annexation of, of Uruguay was actually pretty cool, though. That was that was a fairly quick. Sort of, um, sort of invasion. Let's not go ahead and give Argentina military access. I prefer actually that Chile and Paraguay would win this war instead of Argentina. Peru is involved in this as well. <clears throat> okay, we're going to keep working on literacy. We're going to try and get to as much, as close as possible to 4% of our population as um, intellectuals. And then our literacy will honestly just be skyrocketing from there. And then we're, we're definitely going to want some uh, industrial techs. Um, we still do not have any capitalists in the country at the moment. Do we have craftsmen? We don't have any craftsmen because we don't actually have any, uh, any factories. Chile. Yeah, you can go ahead, Chile. That's fine. Looks like so far, Argentina is... Uh, well, they are winning this, I guess, to a certain extent. Although, I think Chile might be turning the tide. <coughs> Maybe turn the tide. There's the war. Okay, looks like Argentina did actually win. Very interesting. Okay, we have another election. <clears throat> we'll probably go down the realism and impressionism trees. Also, state government associationism, we're going to want. Uh, let's go for protectionism for our trade policy for our parties. Okay, we got research points plus 100%. Let's go for realism real fast. So we went from 15 research points a day to 20, which is really good. And we'll be done with this tech in just about one year. Okay. So anything that costs about 8,000 research points, we can research within about a year or so. So that's pretty cool. Colombia wants military access. He's at war with Mexico. We don't agree to that. <clears throat> Not sure why he needs our help, though. You have the American um, liberation of Mexican New Mexico. For industrial policies, let's go for, I think, interventionism for now. Italian liberation of Venetian. Okay. So the Empire of Mexico... Oh, so this, right here, Animus. Okay. That is a Mexican core, but I guess an American core as well. Interesting. Let's see, the Blight of 1871. Let's go and help out our uh, help out our farmers. Okay, it looks like the conservatives and reactionaries got 54.89% of the vote. So not very much. Not very much at all. Let's actually go ahead and take a quick look. So we have... Some new reactionary parties. We have a Partido Republicano Rio Grandis. 
Protectionism, state capitalism, moralism, residency, jingoism. With no official policy for... No official policy for... Um, welfare. What we could do if we wanted to... Is... We could appoint... We could appoint one of these parties as a ruling party, which will allow us to build factories and stuff. Right now, neither of the reactionary parties are particularly... Particularly popular. It's really the conservatives. So we might actually make people mad by appointing reactionaries into power. But... Considering that we do want to start industrializing and stuff pretty soon, I think it's actually probably a good idea that we do that. <clears throat> Let's go to the Partido Restaurador. And now, because we have a state capitalism party in power, we can see up here, our militancy has actually increased. We can actually start building factories. We can actually come over here and build factories in our um, in our states. So let's take a look here at the RGO output. Let's find out what, what could we build in our most populous states. Where would we want to build stuff? What types of goods here are here and what would we what would we like to build <clears throat> well first we do want to take a look at what our country imports right so we import tea grain and lumber so say i come over here to rio de janeiro and i could go to say a sawmill right a sawmill would in theory take in 97 daily units of timber and would output lumber 131 units of lumber the thing is is this would this output would be 117 pounds, and the required inputs would add up to 113 pounds. So really, we wouldn't be making any profit at all. Like, just none. So, maybe that's not the best idea. <clears throat> Whereas, we can go to something like, um, I don't know, a glass factory, right? We could produce glass, we could produce something like fertilizer, we need to buy sulfur for it, we need to import sulfur for it. We can do cement factories that require coal. Uh, textiles are usually a pretty good deal. Um... Here we'd actually be making a decent profit. So why don't we build like a textile mill here in Rio de Janeiro because it's it's, it's um, our most populous state, or one of them anyway. Let's go to production. Let's go ahead and hide empty states. So let's focus just on Rio de Janeiro. So what you want to do is you want to specialize states when you begin industrialization. You want to specialize states towards certain goods, right? So a textile mill produces clothes and needs fabric, things of that nature. So you want to have all those states possess the goods that you need. So let's take a look here. So we have a textile mill. Let's build ourselves a clothes factory in that state, as well as say a luxury clothes factory, maybe a luxury. Well, what else could we get? <clears throat> we could get something like a luxury furniture factory it requires um, tropical wood and furniture. But for now, let's stick with that textile mill and clothes factory and a luxury clothes factory. We need all that. And let's see, we could, we could also actually do something like um, a glass factory and a winery together. Why don't we do that? Glass factory, winery. <clears throat> and you can see here from our infrastructure, from our railroads, we get a factory throughput of 10.6%. So, not bad. Tea, grain, and lumber. That's what we import. <clears throat> There's a first international in Sweden, so we're going to be seeing communists now. So, what's going to happen is in Rio de Janeiro, we're going to be building up... Let's actually go and get some forts. We're going to be building up these factories, and once they're done, we're going to start having craftsmen actually um, be employed. You can actually even see over here that craftsmen are going to start to spot uh, to sprout up in the Empire of Brazil because they want jobs, right? They want to, uh, they want to be employed in our factories. We'll see if we can find out if there's capitalists or not. We probably don't have enough literacy for it just yet to have enough, you know, capitalists around the place, but very soon they probably will rise up. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens with our industrialization. We're getting some prestige checks right now, which is good, from our discovery of analytic philosophy. Not to mention we research stuff very quickly. Let's get a few more units of artillery. We'll have them hang out in Rio de Janeiro. Um, the Empire of Mexico wants an alliance. It's not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. They are a fairly strong power here in the north. They have a large population, 2.38 million. But it doesn't look like they're too friendly with the United States. They are a constitutional monarchy, though. 
<clears throat> usually monarchies are more likely to ally each other and Republican states are more likely to ally each other. I'm going to go ahead and decline this for now. I don't. Th I think he's a little too far north for him to be of any real use to us. I'm going to go ahead and I think I want to commission another warship. I think I want some more ironclads. Yeah. In the 1890s, we'll be getting into... Oh, wow, that was fast. In the 1890s, we will be getting um, into things like cruisers, submarines, you know, that kind of thing. All right, we get some more prestige. We could go for this Impressionism. That'll give us still quite a bit of prestige as soon as we discover Impressionist literature, art, music. So let's go for that. Let us go for that. <clears throat> and right now our literacy increases about 0.15, or about 16% every month. So it means that in two months, our literacy will double. We'll go from, say, so, so every two months, or six times a year, we add 0.32 to our literacy. That is really, really fast. That is insanely fast. Um, that's really quick. Yeah, that's really good. <clears throat> cool. We'll see if we can um, commission some more warships. We do have quite a bit of money right now. I wouldn't mind getting more ironclads and stuff. I think it's actually a pretty good idea to get some ironclads and things for our navy. Um, as capital ships, they do increase their military score by a little bit. You know, so it's not a bad idea to have have um, ironclads around. <clears throat> so we're going to be getting some more prestige for Impressionism. And then I think we'll go for State and Government Associationism. I think that's what we'll do. Let's take a look at our factory construction. Some of our factories are actually already done. So let's go ahead and start encouraging craftsmen here in Rio de Janeiro. We could use more intellectuals in Santa Catarina. Whoopsies. So we have Santa Catarina and Grau Para. We're encouraging intellectuals. And then in Rio de Janeiro, we are encouraging craftsmen. And you can actually come over here to the outliner and you can see local factories employment percentage. When that's at 100%, you no longer need craftsmen for the, for the factory. And when it's at 0%, it means that you have no craftsmen for your factories. So as we let the game run, we're going to see craftsmen be employed here in Rio de Janeiro, and our local factory's employment will increase. Apparently the Netherlands wants an alliance with us. I'm going to go and decline that, because I don't really see the point in that. But it's a possibility. Ooh, Red John. Let's see. I'm going to either piss off socialists, or we are more in favor of state-controlled trade unions. I don't have a problem with state-controlled trade unions, actually. We can come over here and take a look at the trade unions. Some of them are legal, at least right now. They're all illegal right now. But if we control the trade unions, we get immigrant attraction and social reform desire. So it's not a bad idea to pass those kinds of reforms. As you can see, Argentina is getting a lot of immigrants because not only is he a democracy, but he's probably passed more political reforms than we have. Let's see. A temperance league, everyday needs for poor strata. It does increase poor militancy, uh, um, pop militancy, though. Temperance league sounds good. It's usually quite worth it, actually, to get a temperance league. <clears throat> So as you guys can see, we are producing stuff. We're not producing very much because we don't have a lot of factory employment here. You can actually hover over the good to see what is being produced here. So right now we're producing 0 0.63 units of glass and 1.23 or 1.23 units of textiles. Okay. And then uh, all of our factories need maintenance goods, cement, machine parts usually, and then... You also do need to be able to buy the raw materials. So right now we're okay with getting coal. We can get cotton. We can get dye. Probably because the British have it. Okay, we're going to add another ironclad to our navy. I think I'm going to actually grab several of these. Well, for now we don't have the money. Okay. All right. We possibly could abolish slavery pretty soon. Um, particularly these militant socialists probably want to abolish slavery. Actually, our abolitionist movement is not entirely that large, believe it or not. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. So you can see here whether or not your factors are making money or you're losing money. 
So right now our textile mill, even even for this little amount of textiles that we're producing, we're actually making money. She only wants a line, so we're gonna go decline. And as you can see for our glass factory, we're actually losing money. That might change though. So now as we can see, all of our factories are done. And so you can actually set the priority of your factories or change change the higher priority. So with my national focus, I've set the luxury clothes, clothes, and textile factories to have priority over the winery and the glass factory. So it means that employees will go here first before they go to any of these. So I relist literature. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Good. Okay, let's go for associationism real fast. Well, actually, we don't really need associationism because we're not really fighting wars. This is only reinforcement and your army experience. So we don't actually need it. So let's go for state government instead. We'll probably go for nationalism and imperialism as well. We could also go for social science, which was just unlocked in 1870. And that gets us um, some colonial prestige, a lot of consciousness reductions, or actually consciousness increases, as well as education efficiency and colonial migration. Phenomology and hermeneutics unlocks in 1880. We're going to need that as well for our research points plus 100%. So we're going to need to save up even more points for that. But so far, I mean, we're, we're not doing too bad. We'll get the puddling process, interchangeable parts, and high-pressure steam engines and something like that pretty soon. Let's probably get um, state and government, nationalism, imperialism. That's going to give us more national foci. You can come over here to the national foci here. In your population uh, tab, there's a 3 out of 3. It shows you how much national foci you're using versus how much you can support. Basically, the more people that are part of your primary and accepted cultures the more national foci you're, you can have. You're usually limited by technology, but occasionally you'll be limited by um, population. So if you have a really, really small population of accepted and primary culture pops, you're not gonna be able to have as much national foci as somebody else who has a large population of accepted pops. So you gotta keep that in mind. Wow, Portugal's in bankruptcy towards us. That's funny. The irony of it all. <clears throat> Okay, so we're still not, we don't, we don't really have any capitalists here, unfortunately. Let's try to encourage capitalists saying Bahia, oop, whoopsies. Saying Bahia, Sao Paulo, and in Rio de Janeiro, we're going to focus on, we're going to focus on craftsmen. Let's see if we can encourage capitalists. Okay, so we just got uh, Impressionist Art, Shared Prestige plus 15, because we're one of the first people to discover Impressionist Art, believe it or not. Everybody else working on other texts. And so we now went from 18 to 14 in the world's course. We're now a secondary power just because of that. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Cool. And so right now our factories, um, you know, the luxury clothes factory is actually making quite a bit of money. About seven pounds a day. And the textiles make it about four pounds a day. The regular clothes factory we're not making too much from. And then the glass factory just barely is making a little bit of money. And the winery really isn't making anything because we're not really producing much. Let's go for nationalism, imperialism. Let's go and focus over here. Let's see if we can get some, some more capitalists. Let's see. The, the capitalist focus, you know, it's, it's, a little, it's a little strange. The capitalist focus isn't always the best thing to use. I don't use it too much, actually, because I don't really... I don't really think it's, uh, it works out very, very well. The Congress of London stabilized the Balkans. The great powers of Europe joined together in London to negotiate the future of the Balkans. Ooh, check it out. So we got Hungary. Wow. Really? There's a second Hungarian revolution. It looks like the fucking Austrians are going to lose. Holy crap. So Austro-Hungary is going to break away. Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, but not. Bosnia, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, and Albania are now independent. And then Greece is here as well. Greece has, um, he still hasn't taken back all of his course. He's got some of it though. Cool. Very interesting indeed. We'll probably be playing a Greek campaign one of these days. Okay. All right. Looks like our capitalist focus probably isn't going to be the best thing to focus on. So instead, why don't we put bureaucrats in Uruguay? Because we need to increase our administrative efficiency there. And then why don't we just do, we'll probably just do intellectuals everywhere else that, that needs them. Mato Grosso, Graupada, Santa Carina. Yeah, let's keep intellectuals there. 
Rio Grande do Sul, but I don't know. Okay. So basically when when everywhere pretty much essentially has bureaucrats, intellectuals, and craftsmen, then you want to start focusing on soldiers. You want to start encouraging soldier recruitment. Um, so let's go to Bahia, for instance. Let's go to... I don't know. Oh, no. Right now, we don't actually have to change any national foci. So... What I actually could do is I could increase... We're not making too much money right now, but I could increase administration spending to help with our bureaucracy, or I could increase military spending to encourage more soldiers to be recruited into the army. So let's go and do that, because having a lot of soldiers, having a lot of professional soldiers and manpower is really useful for your country. We got plurality plus 5%. Plurality does increase research points, but it also makes your people more liberal. So we're at 64% plurality right now. So we're going to be seeing, especially in these, these later years of the game, a lot of people becoming more liberal, and we have to deal with a lot more, you know, um, a lot more demands for, on, on our country. Let's go and actually commission another warship, another ironclad for our navy. Okay, so we just got a mission to civilize. This is an invention. Minimum life rating, colonial prestige, and demanded points. Basically what this does is this allows you to colonize a little bit. We're not a colonial power, so we're not going to be colonizing, you know, anything in, in Africa or anything like that. But we could. I mean, uh, depends on what type of country you are. Like, sometimes a mission to civilize is a super, super, super important tech to get if you want to be a colonial power. Okay, so prestige is rising rapidly, rising rapidly. Industrial score, less, less rapidly. Because, um, you know, we don't have as much literacy as other countries. Let's see, Annals of Platinum and History, we're going to curtail the distribution. We have another election. Likely the, um, the Partido Reacc uh, Restaurador, the reactionaries, are probably not going to stay in power. Most likely. That's weird. Okay, so we got impressionist music, so we got more prestige. That was pretty strange. Our navy wouldn't move around for a while. We just kind of stay there. Hmm. Um, let's encourage jingoism. Let's see, who is likely to win this election? So actually, our electorate vote is actually quite a bit Part of the Partido Restaurador. Um, the Conservatives are likely to win, but... You never know. If we wanted to have people vote one way or another, we could encourage a certain type of loyalty. Like, we might actually have to uh, encourage... Let's see. So we can go for pluralism or moralism. Let's actually go for moralism. Make people more reactionary. Let's see what happens. So Coalition of Conservative Reactionary Parties got 66% of the vote. So with the Reactionaries and the Conservatives, um, we're actually winning more of the vote than before. Actually, you can even look at it. Our Reactionary Party is actually the largest party, is actually the largest and most popular party. So actually, we do have the um, the Reactionaries that are going to stay in power. Wow, that's I was not expecting that. Okay, cool. I think that's enough text over here for now. Let's go a little bit for, let's go for some industrial text real fast. Just to help out with our, you know, our natural goods production, things like that. Let's encourage soldiers and say, I don't know, Bahia. A little while. Let's take a look at our migrations. We have a lot of immigration coming to us right now. Which is pretty cool. Let's see. Wanted. Uh, let's search high. Okay, we still don't have any capitalists here. Any capitalists in uh, the Empire of Brazil? It looks like we have some craftsmen kind of spreading around the place. Okay. I think in that case, then, maybe let's build some more factories. Let's go to our second most populous state, which is Bahia. Which is... Up here. What type of goods do they have here? Coffee, livestock, tobacco. Okay. So, let's go a little more industrial here. So, we want to build some steel mills. Let's build an artillery factory, small arms factory, uh, explosives factory, ammunition, and let's do a cannery. Okay, and then um, down here in Rio de Janeiro, why don't we do a liquor distillery and also a cannery? Just to kind of jumpstart, you know. Just to kind of jumpstart some... Um, 
some more, you know, consumer goods, things like things of that nature. And you have the choice to you have the choice to subsidize your factories. So usually I would say in the early game, well, just actually in general, subsidies for factories, they're inefficient by by economic by the laws of economics, subsidizing factories and things like that is inefficient. It's a distortion of the market. But especially in the early game, you want to be producing goods, you want to have industrialization, you want to have, you know, your factories being able to buy the goods and hire the employees that they need to be successful. So usually you always want to subsidize factories in Victoria 2, almost exclusively you want to. Um, it increases your industrial score, it helps hire people, people have jobs, people can do okay in their lives, which makes them less rebellious, you know, which increases your industrial production, all sorts of good stuff. So th to the best of your ability, you want to have um, you're gonna you're gonna want to have subsidies on your factories. Where's that word? Somebody again? No. Okay. So I think we have enough intellectuals around the place now. We have over 4% intellectuals now. So let's start encouraging um, soldiers. Whoopsies. Let's put the beer crap back there. Venus got a ice. So now we're going to encourage soldiers and bureaucrats. And we're still encouraging craftsmen. Um, I think one of our states is about to finish one of the factories. A steel mill is about to be built. So I also have some... Um, some craftsmen be encouraged there. Uh, political reform club, yeah. Let's let's go in favor of political uh, or uh, proportional representation. There's a lot of wars going on right now. Let's actually take a look. Who is fighting each other? Argentinian liberation of Paraguay and Entre Rios. Wow. So Chile and Paraguay are just getting wrecked. This would actually be a good time for us to attack right now, to attack somebody like um, Paraguay. Because we have, we have a core here that we could take back. We could take even more if we wanted to. Let's take a look. What do you guys produce? Iguatemi does have sulfur. May not be a bad idea to actually move some troops in there and take that over for ourselves. We got realist art. Okay, let's go for high pressure steam engine. That's going to be done in 1878. Remember, you can only have one year's worth of research points saved up for the next tech. So, I could save up some points for Femonology and Hermeneutics, but... This type of tetric CB against Barak was detected. We could do that, but you can only save up one year's worth of points. So, you would want to start saving up points in 1860, uh, 1879 rather than 1878, or something along those lines. Okay. So we're industrializing quickly. Let's go and raise um, our military maintenance. Let's get all the goods for our armies real fast. We're going to be losing a little bit of money. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. We do have quite a bit of a reserve right now. 207,000 pounds. We don't have any money in the National Bank, unfortunately, because nobody's really making any money. Um, we still, I do not believe, have any capitalists at all. We have two capitalists. We have two capitalists in the entire empire. Wow. Let's encourage craftsmen in Bahia. We're also encouraging craftsmen in Rio de Janeiro. So, because the textile mill is making a lot of money, it's very profitable, we're hiring workers more quickly than we are, say, this clothes factory. We're still subsidizing everybody. We're just, you know, having more money means you can hire more workers at one time than some other factory. Let's go declare war on this guy. Let's acquire all cores. So, we have a core here in Iwatemi. So, we're going to occupy that. Chile did join the war, unfortunately. Let's see what happens there. Our immigrant attraction is going to go down just because we're at war. We siege sort of quickly. So as you guys can see, ooh, there's a scandal. As you guys can see, we have 100% recon efficiency, which speeds up sieges. We don't have any engineers, so that, that doesn't necessarily help us. We're not necessarily sieging quickly because of that. Let's see, we have another... Um, Let's go for let's go for this late classical theory. That's gonna be done in 1878. Wow, it's actually done really fast. We we finished that in like look at this. We finished this tech in like six months. Super fast. We got grain production output. We discovered the Rotterdam plow. 
Paraguay is in debt to us. I could add a war goal and besides acquire all cores, I could make him pay like war reparations or something like that. Uh, but this, this stack actually doesn't have, I think, any Hussars at all, so setting that stack to Siege would not be the most useful thing in the world. So Chile's the war leader. We took over our little um, our little province here, so he's just willing to give us all of our cores. And... Okay, as a result of the Treaty of the Paraguay, some of the Empire Brazil's lands are to be returned. We are, however, only entitled to those lands over which we have a claim. Any others should, by all rights, be returned to Paraguay. So this this basically is, whenever you attack somebody for something, you attack for a state. It's it's a whole regional area. You can't just attack for little one one provinces and things like that. And so you, it's possible with something like a, a return core CB to actually take the entire state and some of it's not your cores. So you can actually keep everything Everything you've gained, or you could return some stuff. So here, we don't actually have to worry about it, because we only took one little province in this state. It would Temi. So, I could just click, we'll keep everything we gained, but we didn't really gain anything that we don't have a core on. If that makes sense. Okay. Alright, let's, um, let's lower our military spending. Right now, as you guys can see, we're spending crap tons of money on the military. So... Let's go and lower that. We're spending quite a bit on constructions because we're building a lot of forts and things like that. So we're, we're, we're just taking in loads of goods. Okay, we have some projects. Looks like a, a couple of our a couple of our capitalists want to build some more factories. Let's go and let's go and subsidize these guys. All you have to do is just click shift, shift and uh, left mouse click, and it, you'll actually invest in all of these projects. You can invest in the projects of your capitalists, and they'll start building stuff all over the place, which is really good for your industrial score. So let's do that. Everything here in the commercial tech tree, basically market structure, organized factories, things like that, will make your factories cheaper. So capitalists will be able to build more and do more with less resources. Okay, so we have the choice. Let's actually go and save up some research points now from 1879 to 1880 for this uh, Feminology and Hermeneutics tech. So we generate about 24 research points a day. Ooh, we have militant socialists. Looks like they rose up in revolt, unfortunately. We just unlocked a machine parts factory. Machine parts are usually usually actually something that's quite profitable to build. Let's take a look real fast. Let's go to the let's go to the trade. Let's take a look at where industrial goods are. Let's see. Machine parts. Who produces the most and what's the demand? So right now, the supply of machine parts is 84. The demand is 174. So, so, demand is significantly outstripping supply, which means that it would be pretty profitable for us to build machine parts. A machine parts factory. So let's go over here to Bahia, and I'm going to build a machine parts factory, and we're going to make that a priority as soon as it's finished. We're actually going to build one in Rio de Janeiro as well, because we already have a sizable craftsman population here. So I want to take a quick look over here. Let's go and decrease the priority on this, on this factory here. So, as you guys can see, factory employment right now for this textile mill is now maxed. This factory can only physically support 10,000 employees. You have the option as usually anything that's that's not laissez-faire. So if you are a state capitalist country or an interventionism country, you can expand factories. You can give the money to the factory to expand how many people that it can employ. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're gonna actually going to expand this factory right here so that they can hire more employees, produce more goods, have more output, all sorts of stuff like that's going to happen. It's really, really good. When your factories are capped out in employees, they can, you know, you can expand the factories and just hire more and more and more and more. Um, eventually, there's a point where it gets inefficient to where you're actually subsidizing the factories and they're no longer making money and things like that. Right now, we haven't hit that point. So, I think we're doing just fine. I think we make enough money. I think we're doing okay to, to have that happen. As you can see, Argentina is still getting crap tons, crap tons of uh, immigration, as is the United States. So... The more political reforms you pass and things like that, the more we'll be able to get um, immigration. And that'll happen to us. As you can see, we're a secondary power. We're 15th in the world. As our industrial power rises, as well as our prestige, that's going to become even better. We just discovered John Stuart Mill. He was a genius. And literacy, as you guys can see, is expanding even more quickly. Super fast. So our, literally in 10 years, our literacy will increase very, very rapidly. 
I think we started in 1870 at like 26 literacy. Now we're at 42, you know. It's, it's going to increase even more. The more intellectuals you have. Ooh, cool. We have some more projects that are being um, created by our capitalists. We're going we're gonna to invest in all of it. If you have money to invest in capitalist projects, do it. Because that'll just encourage more people to convert to um, capitalists. They're going to you know, be investing even more in, in, uh, in projects. It's just all good. Now we do have the possibility, we have the possibility to do something interesting, is what you can do is you cannot tax the upper class right now. So right now we're taxing every class at 37% income tax or 38% income tax. I could, if I wanted to, to encourage landowners and capitalists, I could reduce the taxes on the upper class. And so more people in the upper class will have money. So for now, let's do that. Let's go in and, and not tax the upper class. We're still taxing the middle class and the lower class. Let's, let's tax the rich less to see if more capitalists will be promoted, if they have more money. Usually, that's actually how it is. So we have the Rome Conference of 1880. Looks like um, the partition of Africa just occurred. So we're going to be seeing a lot of people calling us here in Africa now. Oh, it's 1880. All right. We're ready for our Feminology and Hermeneutics tech. We have about 8,000 research points saved up. So let's go and invest in that project. Let's keep investing in our colonial projects, or in our industrial projects. Sorry. Okay, so we're still encouraging craftsmen in Bahia as well as in Rio de Janeiro. We've got a long way to go before these factories are at full employment. I can actually sort this list by the amount of states with factories. So Rio de Janeiro is the state that has the most factories. So now we have people being employed in clothes and the textile mills, all sorts of good stuff's happening. We have Uruguayan nationalists that just rose up. So as you can see, we have militant socialists ready to rise up. We've got Uruguayan nationalists. I don't think they're going to be too much of an issue for us. As you guys can see, we're not making too much money. So we may, do, we, need, we may need to improve our commercial techs a little bit. We'll probably finish these and then go for another level of commercial techs. Because we're not, we're not making so much money anymore. We, we could probably use more. Alright, looks like some capitalists want to build a machine parts factory. I'm going to go and, and um, help them along. Alright, looks like some capitalists want to build a sawmill, fertilizer factory. So as you guys can see, now now that we have literacy going on and we have, you know, capitalists starting to build things, you can actually see, because we reduced taxes on the rich, now we have a lot more capitalists than we did before. You know, we, we've just kind of indirectly helped these factories, you know, pop up. So we have projects just everywhere. Very good. Okay. Let's go for moralism. I don't think I should think we're going to encourage... It looks like actually the reactionary party is still going to be the, the dominant party in the um, in the legislature, which is pretty cool. I don't think we need as, to, to encourage as many soldiers anymore. Maybe we can do something else with it. Um, well... You never know. More, more, more soldiers doesn't hurt. So for now, let's just let's just keep it going. Um, I'm thinking maybe changing. Um... Yeah, it looks like we still have the reactionaries and party. Okay, so the reactionaries, because of their policies, are actually making people pretty happy. So cool. Let's take a look here. We have the Golden Law. So the Le Orea was sanctioned by Isabel, Imperial Princess of Brazil, who was regent at the time while her father, Emperor Dom Pedro II, was in Europe. It was signed on May 13, 1888, and was the law that abolished slavery in Brazil. It had only two articles. The succinctness of the law was intended to make clear that there were no conditions of any kind to the freeing of all slaves. Aside from the activities of abolitionists, there were a number of reasons for the signing of the law. Slavery was no longer profitable, as the wages of European immigrants whose working conditions were poor cost less than the upkeep of slaves. In the decline in the arrival of new slaves, Brazil was the last country in the Western world to abolish slavery. The Brazilian government was also under pressure from Britain. So we can accept Afro-Brazilian as an accepted culture and we outlaw slavery. I think that's good. Let's do it. Because um, especially now, we used to have a crap ton of slaves. We have 681,000 slaves. And now they're all going to be gone. All of them. We're going to turn those guys into either... You know, laborers or farmers, something along those lines. 
So as you guys can see here, they, they all just disappeared and they went into the other pops. They can go anywhere from craftsmen to soldiers, all sorts of stuff. So we no longer have slavery, which also probably means we're going to get a lot more immigration now because slavery um, really turns people off. We just got our fem uh, femenology and hermeneutics. Let's go for market structure. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. Now that we got rid of slavery, a lot of people are going to want to come here. Look at that. Holy shit, it just skyrocketed. Uruguay's ours. Yeah, so we're going to make some some uh, some good immigrants now. Good immigration. So we get our we get our machine parts factory. Let's go and let's go and hire um let's go and make those priorities for hiring because there's going to be a lot of a lot of good money to be made from those. And basically, actually, anywhere we have where we have factories, we're going to want to encourage craftsmen now. I think we have enough soldiers. We have enough capitalists that we don't need to worry too much about anything else. So the thing is with with capitalists and building factories, they're not really that efficient at it. They're not really good at it. So you usually you're going to want to direct construction yourself. But, you know, what can you do? Um... Or, or in, you know, indirectly helping out with uh, with the placing of factories. Let's see. So the the Germans, why do the Germans want access? The Germans are at war um, with the British over Benin. Interesting. We're allied with the Brits. I don't know if that's. I don't know if this is a good idea. I don't think we should do this. Yeah, probably not. Uh, France wants access. Is France at war with the Brits? Doesn't appear that way, so... Yeah, you can have access. The French can get access. Okay, so we just unlocked a market structure, so as you can see, these are all the benefits. We get farming output, coal, all sorts of good stuff. Let's go for organized factories, then we're gonna go for some of these to improve our tax efficiency, tax collection, such... So already, we're already producing a little bit of machine parts, as well as a little bit of uh, machine parts down here, and you can, you can see we're making quite a bit of money. Um... As the market changes, things may change. But right now, still, the supply of machine parts is nowhere near what the demand is. But now, as you can actually see, it's kind of changing a little bit. It kind of goes back and forth. Whoa. Let's see what happened over here. So, Hungary, Jesus, Lord. So, Slovakia, and looks like Banat took a bite out of Hungary. Hungary's over here. Um, looks like the Russians just tried to take Moldova or something like that. Serbia is getting kind of big. He's almost as, uh, he's almost a, um, a Yugoslavia. Italy's over here. So Austria just got wrecked. So we discovered Feminology and Hermeneutics. Ooh. Reactionary speaker. Excuse me, reactionary speaker. So we can either encourage jingoism in our country or we can have prestige. I'm going to say for most events, taking prestige is what you want to do. Prestige is just awesome because it's a straight boost to your your country rank you know so now we're at level 10 we're rank 10 in the world as, as a power let's go for business banks real fast so we have quite a few research points that that we're now generating which is pretty good all right so then literally in the next 20 years Literally in the next 20 years, we're going to be industrializing. We'll probably become a great power pretty soon. Almost for certain. Let's get business banks, private money, collectivist theory, business regulation, scientific management. We probably don't need to do any more culture text, maybe. Maybe associationism. Maybe a couple of these. But honestly, we're, do we're doing pretty good for now. Um, nobody's actually discovered expressionist literature yet. So we might actually be able to get a lot of prestige from that. So we may want to go for that. You know, in fact, that actually might be enough to boost us into um, a great power status. So maybe we'll do that real quick. We're still actually making a lot of money right now. Even with all the expenses that we have, there's just there's just a lot of capital and a lot of trade and a lot of commerce going on in our country. So let's see, what are we importing now? We're still actually importing lumber, tea, and grain. Interesting. Okay, so we're still encouraging um, employment all across all across our country, which is very, very good for us. Let's see here. Brazilian schools. 
Let's encourage assimilation by a discriminatory school system. How is our culture right now? So we accept Afro-Brazilian. Now we accept Afro-Brazilian because because obviously we, we outlawed slavery. Let's go for let's actually go for the expressionist. Yeah. Let's go for the expressionist tag. So we have mostly Afro-Brazilians. We have some Platinians in Uruguay, but we have Afro-Brazilians and Brazilians. We have a lot of Amazonian people over here, but they may let's see if we can actually do anything with them. Let's go over here to the native status. So, in order to... Huh. So, basically, the Native Status, the Protection Act, it would let us lose infamy, we pay a little bit of money, and we actually make Guarani, Amazonian, and Tupinamba as accepted cultures. Which is not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. We could go for something like the Suppression Act, which would basically kill all sorts of Native American populations, things like that. Or we could go for the Integration Act, which increases our infamy, basically. Um, it doesn't actually seem to have any real benefit. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, for this, for this immigrate, uh, the Protection Act, I think all we need to do is make sure our current government is not reactionary. And our citizenship policy has to be full citizenship. So, that's interesting. For now, let's go and, let's go and collapse this, because it's not a big deal right now. The status of the natives isn't a huge deal. Let's see. As soon as we have some more political reforms, we can actually pass this. We get an immigration boom for this. Hmm. I mean, still, the, the reactionaries are actually pretty popular. Yeah, the liberal parties actually aren't that popular right now. You can actually see a lot of conservatives and a lot of liberals, or um, a lot of conservatives and reactionaries are actually, they're actually becoming more popular. Looks like the conservative um, popularity is decreasing a little bit here. There's the... Um, looks like that's the Moroccan crisis. Tangier protocol. Okay. Well, before this episode gets too long, I'm going to take a quick break here, guys. Um, we are well on our way to becoming a great power. We've got a large military. We've got um, factories coming up. We've got prestige. So we don't even need to go to war with anything. Honestly, we're doing really good just as it is. So... I'm going to take a break here. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks so much.